Uh, this is the Real Church of Christ, number Texas. This is our Wednesday night Bible study, and uh, it is September 14, 2022. And uh, we'll be, excuse me, studying this night. The image of the male is the image and glory of God. The image of the male is the image and glory of God. This is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 7 through 9. Uh, before we get started, as always, I try to do, uh, if ever a mistake is made or someone had a question about a lesson, I try to ask in the very next uh, lesson that I teach. And one is I had a question presented about individuals who heard uh, the Sunday evening message concerning people calling uh, people and asking questions and counseling with people. Uh, when I said don't worry about the time, it's obvious I'm not encouraging y'all to call these men who got jobs and families and they preach and teach at 2 or 3 in the morning with a Bible question or 12 o'clock at night even. I mean, you know, with questions when you know you can call at a more appropriate time. And that's for all churches of Christ. We should understand that. But at the same time, we know there are people who commit suicide in the churches of Christ. I've known them personally. I mean, I've known some of them very well for years. Uh, they will commit suicide, and someone was talking to them at midnight and left them at midnight, yet they still did it by morning. So joy did not come in the morning for them and the person that knew them. I've known people that have gotten in fights in the middle of the night, couples, uh, people that have gone to jail in the middle of the night. So we understand that's a time when you would call, seek counsel, or you're angry with someone, you want to hurt them, you're about to leave your family or leave your children or leave, run away from home, because we should not have a hotline monitored by sinners who are idolaters, many of them literally idolaters, worshiping anything but the Father God, because everybody knows who the Father is. But the idea is that we shouldn't have to depend on them to help us do cases, because they're going to tell us something, going to steer us from the church and bring us to whatever they believe in. So, you know, when we try to talk about being there for each other. It has to be there. You have to be there for each other. So if a man calls a woman at 3 a.m., he's about to kill himself, I'd hate for her husband to say something stupid to him. I'm just being real. You know what I mean? Uh, the kids, because he's about to take his life. Even if he is a known womanizer, I would still say, my goodness, you know, you want to make sure that we understand suicide, People fighting, going to jail, or someone's in jail, got to bail them out, or death. I've gotten calls before people dying in the wee hours of the morning, you know. And uh, so the idea is that, you know, we want to make sure we don't uh, throw a lie in on that to try to change the doctrine of making ourselves available. And, and I know that God will be with us. And so I want to make sure I get that on the next message. We have a question right now. Question or comment, either one is fine. Yes. What if it's just a Bible question or if it's they just want information about their work? Should they call them every day? Hmm. I said, saying, yeah, we, I thought we covered that. Yeah. You know, once a question is answered, I think that's, that's a good question. Says, once a question is answered, I think we've got the answer. But I do know sometimes people will argue a point and they'll keep harping on it. And the Bible does say, you know, we have to keep talking to them. But the idea is that if that soul is wrestling with a thought that's going to cause them to lead a church, or teach false doctrine, or leave their spouse, or leave their family. You know, children run away from home, too. Children run away from home all the time. In the church of Christ, believe me. And so, uh, and they go to church together, man. I run away from home. So, we want to make sure that, I believe, Sister Ozan is clarifying something like a, just a study question. Hey, what did you mean when you said this? Well, you know, you, there are other people to call. Whoever taught the lesson is not the only one who knows the Bible, but if you said it, you should be able to answer it. If you well, said it, you should be able to answer it. That's what we covered, yeah. At night and they always call it all and, yeah. the time. That's well, so what I'm saying. That's a good question. That's, well, I believe we covered that initially. Maybe you might want to listen back. Well, one of the things I want to encourage us to do also is to make sure we listen and then go back and hear again. Here's the reason being why. Because sometimes the thing is said and it, and it becomes like, you know, off-centered if you keep saying someone said something they didn't. Even if it's a mistake, you have to still be accountable for your mistakes because the Bible clears up a mistake in the Bible saying Jesus did not say that John would live forever. 
It could. That's because someone repeated that wrong. They thought they heard Jesus say that, but he didn't. So I'm asked again to repeat, if it is not a life-threatening, what is life-threatening? Suicide. Suicide. I'm, I'm going to kill myself. I'm thinking about killing myself. I'm thinking about killing somebody I know. Saints have killed each other. Both going to church killed each other. I, I, I know of it as a personal event, knowing of the case. Many, not just one, many cases. So we have to understand that. And if this person maybe could have called someone, I said, I'm going to kill my brother-in-law. Whatever. Who knows? They might not would have happened, you know. Or just saying we're arguing. I got my gun right now. Saints have killed saints with a gun in their hand, talking to a saint with a gun in their hand. And then kill themselves. So we have these type cases. You don't know where a person is at in life. I've talked to people person when they were going to commit suicide. And I'm just saying everybody has maybe done that. It's no thing to boast. It's just to say it happens. So if it's you're beating your spouse or you're about to poison them or kill them or you're about to run away from home because you hate your parents or you may want to hurt your parents, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, these things need to be talked about because I know some people that are very angry at their parents and I've talked to them personally about it, you know, and they're holding grudges against their parents, you know, and so the idea is that you have to talk to people about things like this. So, yeah, something just about, you know, what does the Bible mean when it says this? Even, even if you're texting, you still want to do these things at an appropriate time because of the fact is the person may think it's an emergency if their phone lights up. Look down there and it's just, you know, well, you know, uh, you know, what does this mean in Matthew 5 and 7? We have to stop and say, okay, is that life threatening? I'm talking when you're talking about wee hours of the night. Whatever you consider wee hours of the night in your life. You may work third shifts or 11 or 7. You work wee hours of the night. But the idea, most people, uh, the majority of people work first and second shift. We call morning and evening shifts, you know, because that's not a lot. You can see by traffic on the road in the middle of the night. You know, you just don't see as much traffic because there's less people working. So, yeah, you want to make sure things are appropriate. Uh, it doesn't matter the gender. It doesn't matter if it's a man calling a man. Uh, it doesn't matter a woman calling a woman. The thing is, is that we're trying to keep peace in the kingdom, you know, of, of the Lord. You know, I make sure that we respect each other. And so I didn't want about to think, well, you know, I just might have a Bible question at 12 o'clock. I just want to ask, you know, and then call one of the leaders. And I'm, I'm not trying to promote that. So, you know, and, and then you say, well, they didn't answer the phone, man. What's, what kind of leaders y'all got? You know, we, I don't want about to think I'm promoting that. But at the same time, we're talking about critical versus something just that can wait until we get back together. Why do we know that's Bible? Because in the book of Acts, they talked to Paul. The next week, and they waited to ask him more things about salvation. They even waited. Not that we would condone and encourage that, but they did. And we have to understand Jesus told the Samaritans as much as he could, and he had to leave. He said, I've got to go on to Jerusalem. And when they saw that was where his mind was at, they didn't want to hear him anymore. And so the idea we have to understand is the apostles want to bring fire down from heaven, as Elijah did on them. See, you can't make a comment without some Bible behind it. You know, you can't make a comment without some Bible behind it. So we have to understand that. So that's not. And also, finally, one more part you talk about, William, is that when the man came to get bread from his neighbor, the Bible said because of the necessity of it. It wasn't that they were neighbors. It wasn't that he liked it. He said because of necessity. He'll give it to him, even though he don't went to bed with his kids, because it's necessary. So that's why we're saying let it be something necessary to, you know, encourage, because I know, you know, we have men that get off trucks and brothers that work on computers all night. They might have just laid their head to rest at 1230, and, and you know, you call with a question, you know, about, you know, so did Jacob really wrestle with an angel? Now, you know, that's not life-threatening. You know, I mean, I'm just being, I'm just using that, you know, as one example. So, you know, we want to respect these men. I don't want to make anybody think, you know, you just call anytime because such is not the case. So, I hope that answers what we have so far. Brother William. That's going to be a lesson tonight. No, sir. I just wanted to clear up something. A question was asked. I want to make sure it was on tonight's lesson uh, before I go okay. to it. Because uh, it was pointed out it wasn't very clear when I said. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. Call I had, is any time. Yeah, because I had walked in. Yes, I, I had walked in. I was one of I was like, I don't know anybody trying to commit suicide. Over here. No, no. Praise God. No. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Hey, that's what I was thinking. I said, oh, okay. Lord, what's going on? Yeah, amen. Hey, but that's what I was thinking of. Do you know the young man that killed himself 
Yeah, Highland was it Highland Heights? Uh, at one time he was affiliated with Highland Heights. Okay, I think he had killed his, his girlfriend or something like that. Or? His wife, unfortunately, yes. Was it like an ex-wife or something like that? No, or? his present wife. What? And child, yes. Oh. Yeah. I know. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. what I, that, I thought. That was his ex-wife or something like that. Uh, no, that no, that was a bona fide. A marriage. bona fide marriage. Yeah. Oh. Something happened to that poor soul. You mm. know, nothing you could do to stop it. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's what I was gonna talk to you about about the suicide thing. Mm -hmm. But you said people at Church of Christ. Um, we talked about that the other day about mm -hmm. about that uh, suicide thing too about people killing. You know. In the Church of Christ, yes. But uh, we have to understand is that uh, we have to understand a lot of people in Church of Christ now are not going. Mm -hmm. They're not going to you know the paradise. Amen. Because of the thoughts of our mind, you know, because you know the world, you know, you got so much stuff that's going on now mm -hmm. with uh with uh how can I say it with the world? Mm -hmm. It's like you got so much. Anger, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. you got so much anxiety. You you got a lot of people that's depressed about about different about society itself. Mm -hmm. So what they think about say, you know what? It's not worth me living because my world is not changing. Right, still the same. Mm -hmm. So we as Christians, we need to grow. Uh, as far as uh, you know, like our bodies, we grow. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to eat to grow to be healthy. Amen. So that's when it comes to, to, to reading and studying the word, we have to apply it, mm -hmm. apply it to our souls, because if we don't apply it to our souls, it's like this. We can't worry about nothing we can't fix, right? Exactly. Like death. Amen. Someone dies or whatever, we can't worry about that because that's, it, it's really, it's meant, to be, meant, meant for us to die. We don't know who's going to go first. That's right. Mama, daddy, child. And, and some people worry about that because you got some people that worry about when kids go out to college or go out other places, we worry about that. So, oh, Lord, what's, mm -hmm. you know, they all, I'm not there to protect them. What's, you know, what? So you let society buy you down, mm -hmm. which you shouldn't. Right. It's like this. Like they say, whatever the wind blows, the wind blows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So we got to learn how to control our emotions and not let our emotions control our thoughts. Because when we let our emotions control our thoughts and stuff like that, our thoughts control our emotions, you know, it turns us into a whirlwind. Good point, and when it turns into a whirlwind, you have these suicidal thoughts. That's true. And you think about all these different things going on in your life, you say, Lord, why is everything is not pleasing to me? Because maybe it's something that you got to work on. Right. And the only way it's going to get better is you got to work on yourself. That's true. We all do that. You know what I'm saying? You have to work on yourself. If not, you're going to always live in this nutshell mm -hmm. claiming, how do I get out? Mm -hmm. And then what you do, you be bitter against him, her, this, and that. Mm -hmm. And then that's where you, it gets even worse. Right. So it's like this. When a person gets bitter, 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 you're only damaging your soul. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And sometimes it's best to let things go. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's best because... Who knows? You might end up cracking up one day. Yeah. It might have shoot up everybody. Lord, so sure. that's the reason why I, I tell sure. people if it's something that's bothering you, bothering you, bothering you, mm -hmm. sometimes it's best to let go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just right. let it go. Mm -hmm. And then maybe, just like my cousin, you know, he's not here now in Houston. My, my, my auntie, mm -hmm. she's, not, she's worried about him. It's a lot. It's a long story. But mm -hmm. she's been through it through stress and because of the child. Mm -hmm. And my aunt calls me, my other aunt calls me, hey, he's dying in the hotel, such and such. I said, it's not my problem. Mm -hmm. I said, he's 60 years old. Mm -hmm. He should know better. I said, we yeah. talked about the church. We, we did all this. Wow. But I said, he has to learn. Mm -hmm. I said, I can't help him. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Because he has to learn. He has to suffer. Because he, do, he, he does, he did too so much to where it's the point is, 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 is breaking him down. So I'm not here to help him. I can't. Amen. You know, so we have to understand sometimes we have to just let stuff go, let it be. Amen. God bless you, William. Thank you so much. I want to clear up one thing. Brother Fred's got his hand up. You have people also who uh, you come in contact with that live in other countries. So I want to clarify that because 
they're on a different time frame. So you might have a, a Bible Zoom or something you deal with, and they might call you at 3 a.m. because it's 3 p.m. Where you had, I remember talking with a guy like that, and we finally got him baptized. That was the time we could talk, but you know, but the idea is that one second, because that's the time frame. He lived in Australia, and the part of Australia he lives in 12 hours difference, like some places are totally 12 hours difference. So that's a different thing, you know, and that is something where a person's trying to get baptized. That is also different than just a general Bible question, because we have people, you know, who are. On international Zooms, uh, you know, Brother Free is affiliated and teaches on them. Well, you know, it's like a whole other time frame that where they're at, you know. And so uh, the idea is, though, is that, you know, that one's going to be a, a, a real tough one to try and get done because you got to wrestle with that. But, you know, that's got to be something between you and the individual that you've agreed upon. But that isn't just general for me to reach up and call up preaching Australia at 3 a.m., you know, because, you know, uh, with a general Bible question, even then, you know, while time frame, but, you know, it's still a general Bible question. And that's where texting can be a, a great value, too. You know, the person may, okay, I'm going to text a question, cause at 3 a.m., you may answer that 5 or 6 the next day on your time. So I want to make sure it clear, so we don't have international brethren being offended, you know, I think they're offending the saints that are in agreement to get Communication uh, in different all the time. Brother Frias, thank you for waiting patiently, brother. Uh, thank you, brother. I just wanted to read a scripture, okay. Proverbs 3 uh, 27. Okay. Withhold not good from them who, to whom it is due, Amen. when it is in the power of thy hand to do it. Amen. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go and come again, and tomorrow I will give when thou hast it by thee. And so, Amen. you know, when it comes to, you know, the servant mindset, uh, you know, Paul said in watchings you know sometimes he didn't sleep as, as much and you have also in luke chapter 11 verse 5 where it says and he said unto them which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him friend lend me three loaves for i a friend of mine in his journey has come to me and i have nothing to set before him he from within shall answer and say trouble me not the door is now shut and my children are not, are with me in bed, I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So it says here, it says here in verse number, uh, number uh, six, uh, let me see, for a friend of mine, and it's no verse seven, and he from within shall answer. He says he's answering from within. Right. That's what he's saying. Yeah, but then he's saying, yet because of his importunity, uh -huh. he will rise and give him as many as he needed. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seeking, you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And so just one thing concerning prayer. You know, when it comes to Christ, is there a time when... Christ shuts down at midnight from from hearing prayers, right. you know, and I know we're not robots where right. we can stay awake like him, uh, just not stop. But the idea is that we uh, we as servants, ministers, uh, we can't stretch ourselves, you know, and there are times when um, through, through the Bible, it shows examples of us stretching ourselves out for the brethren, you know, long suffering right. is in the Bible. Where you just have to suffer long for that moment. You know, Paul didn't go through, you know, just get beat every day. You know, he didn't <laughs> get right, stoned man. every day. In other words, he didn't have watchings every day. But, you know, when those opportunities were there, you know, he did stretch himself. Exactly. You know, because they asked. And so, you know, we use Christ as our example uh, when it comes to serving. And also another scripture, uh, too much is given. What does it say? Amen. Preach the love to the world. and expected, right? Exactly. Amen. So that's also another thing. Yeah. And we're only here for a short time on earth, you know, then we that's right. put this body aside. So we have to serve as, as concerning what God has given us to, to serve with. Yeah. Thank you, Brother Javier. God bless you, preach. Beautiful work. This has been beautiful addressing, and we've done it together. And I thank God for each of you because, as our brother has said, you know, he gave it to, and that is bread and Jesus' law as a bread. But as Brother Fritz also pointed out, 
not every day it happens. So, you know, we have to understand, and, you know, I believe Sister Sosa pointed that out too, every day because, you know, it, it, the idea is that even, it doesn't matter if you work at home even, you still have to sleep. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad that uh, the saint brought that thought up, you know, for more clarity on it. Because it does, does sound like I was saying, just call any time. So I wasn't saying that. Forgive me for, you know, saying it that way. So I don't, I don't want your brothers to have to deal with that. All sisters, too, because I know sisters call sisters, you know, and everything, you know, trying to discuss the subject. So we thank God for that. This has been fruitful. And also, this has blessed us uh, to open into our lesson because it involves both male and female, specifically, uh, as all Bible lessons are, but this one involves on the earth men and women in their roles. So we want to look at the difference is the image and glory of God is the male. The world has attempted to destroy the male image. And we know this is led by the homosexual community. Now, no one's trying to destroy the homosexual. Not a man. No one's trying to tell them, you know, there's no place for you on earth. Get off. But we're being told there's no place for masculinity. One of his leaders who has a platform, uh, Billy Porter, uh, the dress-wearing actor, uh, he said masculinity is toxic. Now, see, now you may, now, now, you have to stop and go, okay, nobody is saying that we should stop women from looking female because of masculinity. But see, you notice how he and the homosexual community has flipped it to say, okay, it shouldn't be any masculinity, no gender. You see, now, see, that's a sin in and of itself. And see, this is how the world is deceived. See, they'll look at people like this from this angle with this attitude, a person with this type of an attitude to destroy masculinity. But no one said that the homosexual should be removed from the planet, not even the father. So we have to understand it needs to be spoken against as all sin, heterosexual sins. But I must be that to say, well, let's remove the fornicate off the planet, you know, and the, and the adulterer. So, but he wants to remove masculinity. And that's why there's a push for no gender reference. Because the gender that's causing trouble is masculinity, not femininity. And see, they know that. Everybody in the world knows that. I'm going to prove it to you. Okay. Uh, here's the problem. If you destroy the male image, that is the image and glory of God, that's what God said, then you will by that way destroy the authority, power, and glory of God. See, you remove his power because he presents himself in the masculine form. Not because he's trying to be masculine. He is masculine. He is strength. He is power. And so this would mean God is toxic, according to Billy Porter. Because God is masculine. We need to remove God. He literally, it doesn't matter whether he says, and I know in movies he's talking about, thank God, listen, no one cares if you bash God tomorrow and then hug him the next day. No, we're talking about you saying masculine to toxic since God made you saying God is toxic because he akins himself to the masculine image. And so that's the real problem of homosexuality. And you know, on my watch, like people say, my little short time on the earth, the people that come in contact with me, you never going to get away with destroying the image of God. My prayer, you can go tell somebody else that, not me, because and not because I'm a man. Now, women do the same thing that I'm doing. So let's look at this thought. God makes sure that we remember to identify him to masculinity, glorify him because he's masculine. Glorify him because his authority is because he's masculine. Glorify him because his power is because he's masculine. Mass strength. Now let's validate. Let's first look at the person he sent to validate that. His son, Jesus Christ. Now let's look at this thought. God did not make a male or female a homosexual. Jesus Christ is a male. He is called the son of God. Okay, so now that's that. Uh, we don't need to do no research on that. All about the Bible. He's the son of God. Then when he's on the earth, he says, I'm also the son of man because I came uh, from this woman's womb. Son of man. Uh, not daughter. See, that's where our problem is at. And this is where we got trouble. So, let's see did God make them that way. Now, let's go all the way back 
to the book of Genesis. And we will look and see if God somehow erred. Let's look at Genesis 1 if we can. And we got to go to the beginning for some of these lies to kill them. And so the Bible says in Genesis 1 and verse 23. Oh, forgive me. Uh, 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness. And let them have the men of the fish, of the sea, and the fowl, the air, the cow, of all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. Now see that, now you see man now, that means humans, all of the humans, watch why he breaks it down. Male and female created them. See, God knows I got to break it down because somebody going, he already knows somebody's going to lie. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he, him. He says, male and female created he, them. God blessed them. He says to them, be fruitful and multiply and finish the earth. So do it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, of the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. So now, we can't remove masculinity or the gender male from existence. One thing, you'll definitely never have any more people if that was the desire. If everyone, masculine, if everyone cuts themselves and makes themselves without a genital, the male speaking of, well, they won't have any more people. We know nobody's going to do that. But the idea of itself is not of God. And we understand that. But now let's look at Genesis 5 and 3. Because you're going to see something that's going to really show you. Uh, let's, let's get a little more information. Let's get verse 1, Genesis 5 and 1. This is the book of generations of Adam and the day that God created man. And the likes of God made he him. Male and female. Look it said again. Created he them. And blessed them. And called their name Adam. And the day when they were created. First I have to understand that. They are humans. We're not animals. And Adam lived. A hundred and thirty years. And begat a son in his own image. Like did you see that? In his own Likeness and after his image. And called his name Seth. So what does that tell me? So God continues to make males after the pattern of males. Females after the pattern of females. So an individual born an intersex. Which may have both uh, genitals. And uh, maybe some other female organs. Male organs. Because it's called a birth defect. But the spirit is made by God. And isn't susceptible to the curse of the earth on the physical. And so therefore the spirit will be the male or female. Will not be both. And that is a lie. And we see because he said I made them male and female. So now we got that much under our belt. So let's try to gain some more here. Now let's understand something about Jesus Christ. Look at Hebrews chapter 1 and verse number 1. Now, we validated that Jesus called the son, not the daughter. Everybody knows that. God, who had sundry times, Hebrews 1, 1, and in diverse manners, which is different times, different ways, spake in time past to the father by the prophets, hath in these last days, and this is written around in the first century, spoken to us by his son. Now, there it is. Once again, a male name, attribute, identification, whom had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person. Now this is going to be the difference when we go and read man is the image and glory of the law. Jesus is different now. He is the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself Purge our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So now we got us. That's okay. So, okay, well, Jesus, that makes him greater than us because he's the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his person, making him different. Now, let's look at another thought here. If we can do this, look at, if you will, Colossians 1 and verse 14. We don't have anything personal against the homosexual community or women. 
in general, nothing personal. But we have to teach what the book said. And we're going to die like that. And if the Lord said, well, still wasn't enough. There's some things you didn't get right. Well, we won't get there. But one thing it would be known. We won't have been taught this portion wrong. Colossians 1, 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. So now we see this and understand that this is speaking of Jesus Christ as you go up. From verse 7 on down reading, you see his, his uh, mention Christ. And then you'll see mention in verse number 12, giving thanks to the Father that made us meet to be partakers of the heritage of the saints in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us to the kingdom of his dear Son. Once again, masculine. And I think we got that pretty well nailed to the cross. So now we'll go and see the difference in the male and female from the book of Corinthians, the first book, chapter 11. And then we will go to verse number 7. Okay. 1 Corinthians 11, 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Now what is he dealing with? A question was posed about the covering of men and women. Should they be covered in church? They not. The Corinthians already have a culture. So he's addressing the question based on their culture, your culture, and everybody else's culture concerning should women be covered, uncovered? Should men be covered, uncovered? So he says, for a man indeed ought not to cover his head. He's going to explain why for as much as he is the image and glory of God. I want you to note the word image is the same word that we found in Colossians. And so now we're going to take a minute and pause and read what does that word mean, image. So someone says the same thing the Bible says about Jesus. It says about males concerning who they are giving the image of in their Physical presence on the earth. This is what he's talking about. So now we're going to look at uh, the word image. Concerning from the, now we're talking about from the book of Colossians. This is what we want to grab the one. Because this one is in reference to Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 11 and 7 uses the word G1504. And you will find that one and we'll reread. In Colossians 1.15, G1504, in case someone may want to debate the meaning, because sometimes we have one word there, and the Greek does have two different words, and it will impact sometimes, not always. But in this case, it is the same, so we have no debate. Uh, it says, a likeness that is literally, statue, profile, or figuratively, representation, resemblance. So, the male resemblance in his masculine form represents the deity. It represents God. Now, Jesus Christ is the brightness or the illumination of that. He is the illumination of God and the express. Now, why is those two to show? Because somebody will be trying to do like the Catholic Church, and they will try to make you be able to go and pray to one of us for forgiveness of sins, in which we cannot. We do not forgive sins. You confess sins, and we pray together for you. But no, we don't forgive sins. We can forgive you if you sin again, but that don't mean God will forgive you. So brightness, and we see here, brightness of his glory. Now watch this. This one's in Hebrews 1 and 3 brightness of his glory so that makes him different it says an off flash man this is something that is effulgence brightness off flash and so so jesus like a like a flash and you see woof, whoa did you see that that's what god looks like and finally mentions and brother we're going to brother free us in a second also uh, express image 5481 
That's why we want to go to this word, because this is a further explanation in Hebrews, giving more meat to who Christ is than Colossians did, because they just use the same word, image, which doesn't hurt anything. But now Hebrews says, okay, we're going to show you the difference in the images. It says a graver, the tool of the person, could be the tool of the person, that is by implication engraving character. The figure stamp that is an exact copy, figurative representation, expression. That's why Jesus didn't sin. He's an exact copy of God. Notice this, and this is so important. Man, God is so good to give us Hebrews. Okay, Brother Frizz and then Brother William. Because we got debates going on. Brothers are fighting. Brother Frizz is one of them fighting hard to help souls understand. Jesus is an exact copy of God, which means there's an original. He's not it. Jesus is not the original. He is deity. He's not the He doesn't have a watermark to follow. Okay, thank you, preacher. I'm bringing the telephone. <laughs> thank you, God. God bless, brother. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, preacher. Yes. When it comes to the image, you know, when you go to Romans chapter 1, right. looking at verse number uh, number 22, uh, it says, professing themselves to be wise they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man to birds four footed beasts creeping things therefore God gave, also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever amen for this cause God gave them also into vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is in, against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burning their lusts one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, receiving themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. And so it says here that they didn't like the image of God. That's right. They wanted to be it to be changed like corruptible man mm -hmm. and so when it comes to what they desire they want you to accept and agree this new image that they made mm -hmm. uh, that Satan has made uh, mm -hmm. homosexuality women with women men with men and the idea is that that's why they want to get rid of the masculine image because it's in the way mm -hmm. because it continues to speak against their image that they made mm -hmm. and so when they see that image that God made, they don't like it, they hate it, so they have different names that they come up for, like you mentioned, uh, masculine, talks of masculinity, mm -hmm. and they want everyone to accept it, they, they use words like hate, mm -hmm. you have hate speech if you speak the truth, but it's not hate speech, it's, it's what is creation, it's, okay. it's creation speech, it's what God created mankind to be, but because they're pushing it so hard, Satan is pushing it so hard, his time is, is coming to an end, his intention is for mankind to either be that or accept it. When you accept it, now you're fighting with them. Amen. Even though, let's say you, you're a man that only likes women, but at the same time, because you've accepted their doctrine that it's hate speech and love, you may have a wife, but you're fighting for them. And now God is going to get you for sticking up for a sin, a sinful image that they made. That's right. Because you have a wife and kids, but, but you know, you put flags in your house, don't hate, you know. You know, that, you know those flags, you've yeah. seen them all around Rainbow people's flags. houses yeah. with the green, yellow, red, blue. And so the idea is that God is going to bring that into judgment that you stuck up and fought for an image that God hates and he does it doesn't represent him that's right and so i just wanted to say that you know it's not that we we don't hate them we hate the sin that they commit that's and right. god hates it and god desires that they see the truth they change before it's too late because they've changed an image that he never made god bless you preach beautiful scriptures man this is a good class praise god man i enjoy it there you go brother william thank you Javier. Yeah. You know, when you do go to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 13, it says, Judging yourself, is it commonly that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Mm -hmm. It says, question. It said, do not even nature itself teach you 
that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. Amen. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. Mm -hmm. For her hair is given for her covering. That's right. So that's when you go, when you, when you, when you, and oh yeah, it said in that verse 16, it says, but if any man seem to be contentious, which means debatable, argumental yeah. about it, mm -hmm. we have no such custom, which, you know, yeah. uh, customs like, um, um, custom to what's going on now. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The, uh, oh, what's the name of that, um, what was the name of that said Black tradition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cause really what what it is is that when it comes to, you know, being when gay. Can't wear pants, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, a tradition that's starting to be a tradition now in our in our mm -hmm. society now. Mm -hmm. But but when you go there, but if a woman have long hair, it is the glory to her, for her hair is given for a covering. But verse fourteen, it says, Do not even nature self teach you that if a man have long hair mm -hmm. It is a shame to him, mm -hmm. because when a man have long hair, he resembles himself as a, as a woman. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Exactly. That's why men shouldn't have long hair. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes to to women, when it comes to women, her hair is the covering of her face because exactly. it, it identifies her as a true woman. That's right. Hey Amen. God bless you. Well, you know this is wonderful, brothers. God bless y'all. I'm gonna tell you, you know the beauty, the beauty of this is that. One of the things we have to understand in our study is this simple thought, is that you look at Christ, the woman, and the man are both made image and likeness of God. So in 1 Corinthians 11, it's okay, the woman is actually the glory of the man, but it doesn't say she's the image of the man. And this is why it's important to look at the text, but it says, we're going to read in a minute, that the Man is the image and glory of God, the deity. But Christ is the brightness of God and express him. So now we say, okay, the woman, she's equal to the man. We'll talk about that in part two. She's equal to the man, her holiness, her righteousness, her love for God. But the difference is, is that her image, and see, this is what they're trying to do. You, you probably don't, and maybe I didn't originally really know why they want to have a man like a woman, woman like a man. Because see, I'm on a mission. Satan has got to destroy because he know whatever makes a man look masculine, it mirrors an image of God. Big muscles, strong, uh, lifting, uh, heavier voice. Maybe My voice is light like a woman. I have a lot of people say, yes, ma'am, thank you. But you know. I mean, I'm not gay, but I mean, that's just it. So I'm just saying, but those attributes, any one of those, heavier voice, masculine strength, strong, sternness, any attribute attributed to a man, believe me, it shines and it strikes a respect for the Father. That's how God's designed it because it glorifies it. And then as we see it, we stand down and we listen. Wisdom teaches us to listen to a woman rebuking us for sin. But the Bible teaches us that whatever is being talked about, that you're going to have to have a man to finalize a male because he has the image and glory of God in his persona, how he shines forth, how he stands forth. He and the woman are both holy, but that's the difference. That's what I will end up with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we'll see why it explains. And this is why you understand why women can't be leaders in the church. Because this will be the violation of who's, who's mirroring, who's shining the image of God. Not just of Christ, of all the deity. And that is the masculine. And so it says here, uh, verse number 7, for a man indeed ought not to cover his head. For as much as he is the image and glory of God. So we're going to read this one more time. But the woman is the glory of the man. Notice, not the image. Glory of the man. Glory of the man. And see, that's the key. And so, so what his argument is, is plain, is that if you guys are arguing about who should be covered, who should be uncovered, he says, but listen, in, in understanding coming to church, if a man is covered, he covers the glory of 
that he's expressing, an image of God. If the woman's uncovered, she's glorifying the man because she is his glory. Now, see, when the Lord says it, he says, that's how I made you, and that's how it is. And so, what I said, but he's going to fix his argument like Brother William said, verse 16, like Brother William said, but if any man seemed to be contentious, he said, we have no such custom, neither church of God. So we're just going to reemphasize the points that all you uh, brothers have made tonight is that we don't have no custom like that. And God bless you all for these statements. So we'll end on that last thought William had. No cuss like that so nobody don't go. They were teaching over there. Will Clayton, your mama need to be covered. No, we didn't say that. God bless you. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 will help us tremendously in that the Bible says, verse 3, that something special happened to this image that's bright and expressed of the Lord. He says, first of all, I deliver unto you which I receive how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, if this is true and we believe it to be true, Mark 16 and 15 says, Go teach it. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes in the baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. There's no debate there. That's the instruction. Acts 2, 36. I see if they did it. Therefore, let out the house of Israel know surely that God had made the same to you who crucified both Lord and Christ. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Said to Peter, to the rest of the apostles, me and their brethren, what shall we do? So the church starts in Jerusalem, not anywhere else. Then Peter said, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of sins, you shall see to get the Holy Ghost. For the promise unto you, to your children, to all that our fault, even as men of all our God shall come. In other words, the testimony of God saying, save yourselves from this untoward, which is a pervert or crooked generation. What did they do? Then they gladly received his word, were baptized on the same day they were asking about 3,000 souls. And what did they continue after that? They continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking the bread and prayers. Fellowship being to walk in the light as Christ is in the light. Acts 2, 47, praising God, having faith with all the people. And the Lord, not the preacher, not the deacons, not the elders, not the Bible teacher, not the church. The Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Acts chapter 8 shows the same message must go to the most intellectual, most renowned, most financially powered, whatever greatness you possess, person, same message. Acts 8.35. Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture and preached unto this great man of authority, this Ethiopian eunuch, Jesus. There we go. As it went away, there came a certain one. The eunuch said, see, here's what, what hindered me to be baptized. Philip said, if thou believes all thy heart, thou mayest answer and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We got to hear that. Or you got to nod. If you can't talk, tell you wink one eye. If you can't wink, tell you squeeze our hand. We got to have some signal from you before we dip you so we can know you're in agreement and we don't damage ourselves. Who does the baptizing? Well, let's find out. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse number 13. This is a unique discussion. For by one spirit, there we go, are we all baptized into one body. Well, the Jew or Gentile bond of friend have all been made to drink into one spirit. So we accept that. Now, would it save me? 1 Peter 3, 21, the life figure wanted to even baptism does also now save us. Don't worry about the thief on the cross. He says, not the putting away the filth of the flesh is not being washed by the water, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ is going to heaven on the right hand of God. Angel, authority, and powers be made subject unto him. Watch this. Revelation 2.10. What do we do if the devil gets a hold of us and starts bringing some physical damage? Fear none of those things with thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried. So you tribulation 10 that be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. Praise God. That's hope. That's all we need, brethren. That's what we're looking for. And God bless you for laboring tonight, listening and support, and also teaching right along with what we say. If you need to be baptized right now, stay standing while we get ready to sit down. If you visit this message, the Javier Frizz has been one of the ones answering many of these tough questions tonight, answers questions all the time on that channel. Whatever you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to get with, put the question up there. Brother Frizz will get to it ASAP, uh, and he will answer it with scriptures, and he will help you be guided to other saints in your area, no matter where you live. And you will be able to be baptized or counseled further. We want to encourage, especially the women who are being encouraged to kill babies. Please stop. Put those questions. Call us live on the app. Uh, you call us and talk to us. That's a question you call any time of the night.
I don't care what time you're about to kill a baby, please call somebody in the Church of Christ and ask for help. You're about to kill yourself. You're about to give up on life. You're about to hurt somebody else. Call or come right now while together we stand and sing Heaven's Invitation.